The more things change, the more they stay the same. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we are headed to the world of Wolsen Lords of Mayhem. The good old developers from Wolsen Studios have officially dropped patch 1.1.2.0 or a better way to put it Blood Trail Part 2. And whenever Wolsen Studios drops a new update I get to bring back one of my favorite series is it fixed yet? As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right, let's jump right into this. Like always, we have to start off on the official Steam page for Wolsen Lords of Mayhem. Now looking at current reviews, its overall score is a 55% and it's been sitting at a 55 for a long time, but recent reviews have shot up to a 64% or a solid D. Now you're probably thinking, wow, that score still sucks, but it, for Wolsen, it continues to get better. So that's good. Let's actually see what the community is saying through the comments. And I will read the ones that are coherent because some of these don't make sense. The game would be rad if it did not use horrible sluggish servers. I reinstalled recently, hoping that the lag issues would have been resolved or maybe an offline mode. Nope, still the same. Actually felt worse than before. Great product, poor delivery. Don't buy this game. Just from a functionality standpoint, it's terrible. Basic attack and move are set to the same button. Something you can't change, which is terrible for ranged builds. So you're constantly holding shift while destroying your ability to stay mobile and survive. Okay. Uh, if I wasn't playing with my brother, I wouldn't touch this game with a 10 foot stick. Bug in rage and power system is a waste of time. Just makes builds more complicated than they should be and makes a bunch of builds unviable. Ambient. Ailment damage seems like the only way to get anywhere far in endgame. Why are builds so hard to make viable? Well, there's some not so good comments. Real question is where are all the campaign parts that they did in the alpha and closed beta, which was actually something you can do and enjoy the game was far from finished. A good example of this was no cooldown on chain lightning, so you could just spam it, and I mean spam it. Apparently that content was good, was too good for the release version of the game, so it got banned. The company may be fine at the campaign may be fine as you're following along a story and is somewhat trying to figure out what is going on in the game, but the end game is be beyond mind numbing horrid. The end game is really, really bad. The, flex the flexibility of character building is pretty good. See, there's a positive comment. Great storyline, however, very buggy and needs to be reworked to resolve these bugs. Okay, so normally we actually have a mixed bag in this time going through the comments, definitely more negative than positive, and the negative comments, you're talking with people 48 hours, 66 hours into the game, so 33 hours into the game. So these people have definitely put in some time. Now I skipped over, but if you were considering purchasing Wolsen Lords of Mayhem, I do have to call it out that right now the game is 30% off. So normally 40 bucks, but you can get it right now for $27.99. Okay, so that's the Steam page. Those are reviews. Let's move over to the Steam charts. And I actually want to start off with Path of Exile. Now I'm going to show you these other games so you have some reference points, okay? Path of Exile right now in the past 24 hours has had 49,639 players as far as their peak. And obviously they just dropped their Ultimatum League and Path, Path of Exile is currently the biggest and the best. So let's switch over to Last Epoch, which is an indie studio, a game that is in early access, and they have had 1,500 players peak over the past 24 hours. Okay, now let's check out Wolsen Lords of Mayhem, and it cracks me up what the number is. 666 players over the past 24 hours. Yes, six 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 now when you're talking about wolson bleeding players you're talking about another 27 percent are gone and most days they struggle to break 600 and then on the weekends they struggle to break 700 so there's not a single day throughout the week where you will see it jump into the 900s i think it's one hour one day right here these two hours on Saturday, 7 and 8 o'clock, it barely breaks 800. Everything else is under 7, and most of it 
is under five. So from a player base perspective, they just continue to lose more and more. Okay, let's actually move over to the update. Wilson Bloodstorm Part 2, Patch 1.1.2.0. Are you ready for all the additions that are coming to this game? This content patch brings new environments, new monsters, the loot filter improvements, animation improvements, quality of life improvements, bug fixing. Starting off with the loot filter UI. The loot filter UI has been reworked to be more intuitive and user friendly. Now, obviously I will have to test this because I can't possibly imagine it being more user friendly. The loot filter in this game is as basic as humanly possible. I bet you my eight year old could use it and totally understand the system. So I'm curious about how this new loot filter is going to work and we will check that in a minute. Here's just kind of this little graphic for it. Don't worry about that. We will look at it in the game. Item indicators. Items with S and T affixes will now have its will now each have specific markers both on the ground and in your stash inventory. Nice. Nice. Why, why didn't it have this already? Okay. Good. It's a good improvement. It needs its own section. New environments. These two. New monsters. One, two, three, four, five. We got all these new monsters and cl and subclasses of those monsters. Okay. Animation updates. And it doesn't specify what the update is. Is it just like a couple extra pixels? Is it going to look completely different? Again, we will have to test it, but all of these skills got animation updates. Quality of life improvements. Ooh, let's see what we got in this section. Legendary and unique items are now marked on the mini-map. Increase the maximum stack size of gens and crafting regiments from 20 to 100. The latest difficulty level chosen in the expedition window is now the one selected by default when opening the UI. FAZ will make her grand return to the mini-map. Nice! And then bug fixing. Check out all the bug fixing. Believe it or not, I read this entire list. Yep, word for word, looked through it to see if there's anything that was driving me crazy, and not really, except for one little dot here. Fix an issue where killing the prey during a hunt in endgame expedition would also count as expedition as completed. Now, I didn't think that that was a bug. But if you're going through the expedition and you kill your prey, that counts as killing a boss for that expedition, so you can just run through the portal. I always thought it was a reward, and now I find out that it was a bug. So now you have to kill your prey and then also kill the expedition boss, which is fine if that's how it's supposed to work, but I never thought it was supposed to work like that. And that is the entire update for Bloodstorm Part 2. Now, maybe it's unfair because I made a video yesterday breaking down the patch preview for last epoch 0.8.2. And I would say that probably this much of a paragraph would have more in it than all of this. I don't know if anybody else notices, but look at how they use spacing in their updates. It's like everything is super spaced out, so it makes it seem like you're scrolling a lot, but really it's not that much information in here for this update. It feels like the entire update is quality of life improvements. Little teeny things here and there that ultimately will make the game better, but it is nothing massive. Nothing massive. Okay, it's time. Let's log into the game and see, is it fixed yet? We are officially logged into Blood Trail Part 2, and I have officially been playing for four hours. I don't want to pretend like I've been playing for 12 or 16 or been grinding. After four hours, I feel like I got a good sense of 1.1.2.0, starting with the loot filter. Now, it took me a, a minute to remember where to actually find the loot filter in this game. It is this little box right here in your inventory. And when you click this now, it pops up this menu and you'll see default profile and you got this little green plus that is like flashing in your face. And when you click on that, everything becomes lit up so you can click on it. 
But first, we want to rename it because we don't want our loot filter to be called new profile. So then you have to push this little feather pen and then you can type in summons. OK, and now let's actually pick what we want. This is literally the most basic filter you will ever see in a game, but I guess it's better than nothing. OK, check this out. Armors. You literally just highlight what you want. It's not like armors you get to pick for, you know, gloves or pants or boots or helmet. No, armors, all of your armors as one. So we don't want any common. We don't want any magic. We want rare, legendary, and unique. And for me, I want, let's say, I don't want rogue. I don't want bruiser. And I don't want source. Okay? So now I've got heavy rares the rest all legendary, and the rest uniques. But this is where it sucks, okay? So what happens if I want a rare, heavy glove gauntlet, but I want a bruiser rare shoulder? Well, under that, I would have to click this, and then I would get all bruiser stuff. So you can't actually click shoulders which one it's just all or nothing <laughs> it's ridiculous okay but that that's how the system works okay on top of that you have weapons the exact same thing but at least for the weapons it's broken down by type of weapon okay so you put what type of weapons you want then you have your accessories and then you have your miscellaneous which is basically your crafting materials your dies and your maps and that in here, it's literally just, it's not which ones, it's all or nothing. Do you want to see them or do you not want to see them? This is as basic as you can possibly get. And it is very intuitive because, again, my eight-year-old could figure this out. But that is the new loot filter. Now I'm going to quickly show off some of the new animations, starting with my summons. Now, before they used to kind of move their stick downward and it like throws a bolt of lightning. It is no longer like that. Check this out. They like now thrust forward shooting it. It actually, it actually does look a whole lot better. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Look at that. It's like a machine gun. Can't wait for the summons improvements for this game, okay? So you saw that. Now I'm going to show you my Plague Burst. Ready? You see this ring around the outside that's kind of moving? I think that's what's new. That's, I'm pretty sure that's new. Yeah, see how it's moving in a circle? I mean, it looks better. It's kind of like a... I don't know, like a poison cloud or something? I don't know. But they for sure made a difference with those animations. You can tell. They're not huge deals, but it does overall make the game feel better. For sure. Are you ready for the next massive improvements for this game? Watch this. You see these crafting materials right here? 20 becomes 40. You can now stack them. Ho, ho, ho. And this, I can put it up to 100 now. You see that? Huge, right? On top of that, let's go over here. And let's drop some items. Look at the mini-map. You see them? Stars. They're good-looking stars. They're actually the same color as the item. You see them up there? Two huge quality of life improvements. Wolson. My final thoughts on Blood Trail Part 2, Patch 1.1.2.0. The game practically feels the same. Do I like the new animations? Yes, I do. Is the loot filter technically better than the old loot filter? Yes, it is. Am I happy that I can now combine all of my crafting materials and see uniques on the map? Yes, I am. Am I happy that all those bugs have been fixed and stability continues to get better for this game? Yes, all of those things are great, but they are minute. They are very, very small when it comes to Wolson. Now, let me explain my thought, okay? When Wolson dropped 
Path of Exile was in the Metamorph League. That was six leagues ago. And obviously, GGG is a huge company, and they've been developing their games for 10 years. So maybe that's not a fair comparison, how much they have progressed Path of Exile. But let's just take a look, and I always bring it up, my current favorite number one ARPG, Last Epoch. Them going from 0.8.1 to going to 0.8.2 as a smaller than you indie studio in early access, just one patch in three months. They are doing more and giving us more than what Wolson Studios has given us in 15 months. That is my problem. Does the campaign for Wolson function well? It does. I actually started a new character so I can test out the servers, test out the missions, because that is part of what I do now when they drop a new update and everything has been stable. I didn't get kicked off once. I really didn't experience that much lag. The game felt pretty stable and I didn't get stuck on any campaign missions. This is my main problem with Wolson and it is right here. This is the end game system. This is it. And other than this one box right here, this is the exact same system that launched March of last year. It's the exact same one. So if you played March of 2020 and you grinded it for a month, two months, three months, and now you logged off and you want to see what Wolson has to offer in mid 2021 with this new content update, you are going to find almost the identical, the exact same screen and that is my problem how many times can people run expeditions without getting bored how can this game after so long and so much time being dedicated to it they still technically have one end game system and it is boring and it takes forever to complete wilson isn't the type of game you could just log in play really quick when you have some time and then log out no like an expedition, playing through it and doing everything it has to offer, it takes some time to get through that. Not like Last Epoch, you can log in, run three or four Echoes, and then log out to dinner or whatever you gotta do. That is not how this game is designed, and that is my problem. I have said it before, I am willing to say, Wolson Lords of Mayhem, this game is fixed. If they give us some more builds, if they fix summons, if they give us a new end game system, we need something to do that is my current main gripe with this new update is it bad no everything functions just as they said the problem is it's just they didn't really do that much they might dress it up in a long patch and we read through it but ultimately it's nothing that you truly notice when you are playing the game and that is my assessment of this update. All right, I want to know what you think. Wolson, Lords of Mayhem, is there anything this company can do to bring you back to play this game? Let me know in the comment section below. If you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We're approaching 900 members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Everybody loves Is It Fixed Yet? At least maybe you were entertained. That's it. Erin, out.